Welcome back. So we're going to take a look at covalent compounds. So as mentioned earlier, so they consist of nonmetals bonded to nonmetals. Last time we looked at ionic compounds in which we had metals and nonmetals. So now we'll just simply look at nonmetals bonded with nonmetals. Look how they come together. Uh, look how we name them. Look how we uh, do the formula, etc. So I just think of a couple here. Let's see. Um, how about... Uh, Name the following. Covalent compounds. So we'll look at this, and we'll also look at acids as well. So if we take a look here, throw that up, throw that up. Uh, let's see, how about then maybe lastly this. Good. So if you look at page four of your periodic table book, you would have, I would have highlighted this part here. So when we have two nonmetals, we use this prefix system. Okay, so that's the, so mono, di, tri, tetra. And if we look at naming, so first of all, if it's made up of a metal, then it's ionic, so we don't have to worry about it. But if it isn't made up of a metal with the, with the first unit, then we go here. Does it start with an H? If it does, then that will take us through the acid route. But if it's not an acid, if it's not an H, then it's not an acid, and we use the prefixes. So use the number for each type of atom, so mono, di, tri, from that page four. So the, the two rules that we need to adhere to is use the name of the first atom with the prefix, except we don't include the prefix mono if it is, in fact, one element. Okay? Uh, the second one, we add the word "-ide", and we do use mono or di, tri, etc. So if I look at what we have here, you can see we have carbon and oxygen, but again, it, the second element has the "-ide", ending. So carbon and oxide, and I left a little space here because with the second one, we always use a prefix. And the prefix for one, of course, is mono, but we drop that O off because it wouldn't, doesn't sound right if you call it monooxide. And we only have one carbon in front, but if you recall, we don't use mono on the first element. So it's just simply carbon monoxide. This one here, carbon, this time we have two, so it's dioxide. Over in this next last one here, we have nitrogen, and of course we have oxide, and I see here I have four, so that is tetra. Again, I'm going to drop the A off. Tetroxide, and uh, of course, dinitrogen. Okay, so that's how, given the formula, how we name it, and of course what we could do is vice versa. Um, write the formula for each of the following. So writing the formula, so let's see here, let's look at uh, so that's fairly straightforward, it's just reversed. And the very dangerous dihydrogen monoxide. So nitrogen and oxide. And uh, no prefix here, but we have a di over here, so NO2. Nitrogen and oxide again, but uh, oh, mono, so we just have one. Now, technically, when I mentioned before there that if something begins with hydrogen, it's an acid, with the exception of this one. Good old H2O, dihydrogen monoxide. All right, so that is how you name covalent compounds and formula writing for covalent compounds. Let's maybe take a look at acids here too. So I'm going to throw a couple of acids into here. We'll throw in this one. We'll throw in this one. And we'll throw in this one. So the naming's a little bit different. So if we look back to here, so if it doesn't begin with the metal, it's covalent. 
then do the H test. Does it begin with an H? Then yes, it's an acid. And H and what? So if it's H and a halogen, or we could just simply say one other element, then the format goes like this. Hydro, whatever that element's uh, identity is, and then ic, acid. So fill in the blank with the stem. Okay, so that's, a, a, and I have an example of that right here. I have H and Cl. Cl is a halogen, so it's H and one other element. So I do include hydro. Now that is the chloride, chloride ion. So chloride becomes chloric. Hydro, chlor, not ide, but chloric. And then you just simply add the word acid. If I was going down here and going vice versa, let's say I had hydrobromic acid. So because it begins with hydro, you know it's going to be H and one other element. And uh, bromic, if it's brom hydrobromic acid, it was originally the bromide ion. So it's HBr because H plus Br minus HBr. If it had been sulfide, of course we'd have to see that two hydrogens would be required to balance that one sulfide, so it would be H2S. And that's a weird one too because blindly the sulfide becomes sulfic, so it'd be hydrosulfic acid. But if we look back here, it's hydrosulfuric. So remember I got you to label some of these exceptions. With some of these, there's a few extra letters added in, including this one. Instead of being hydrosulfic acid, it's hydrosulfuric. All right? So that's what you do when you have H with the halogen or something like the sulfide. Now, the other ones, we have H bonded to a polyatomic ion in these ones. And there's a different set of rules there. So if it's bonded to a polyatomic, if that original polyatomic ion was an 8, it changes to ic. If it was an ite, it changes to us. Because if you look at this back sheet, you'll see that a lot of polyatomic ions end in 8 or ite. So if I'm looking for this, NO2. NO2, let's see if I can find it right there. NO2, and it's nitrite. So it's an I-T-E, and if it's an I-T-E, it becomes us. So instead of nitrite, it becomes nitrous, and then add the word acid, all right? And uh, if I look at NO3, that's a few spots below there, NO3, it's ni, let's see, where are we here? NO3, there it is right there. So NO3, it's nitrate. So of course, if it ends in 8, it simply becomes ic. And notice, no hydro prefix for these ones. We don't use that hydro prefix. So the nitrate becomes nitric acid. Okay? And if I was going in reverse here, uh, let's see if we can go in reverse and uh, think of a, a few here that we could use. So I'll pick ones that aren't the exceptions. So let's look at uh, this one here. So let's look at chlorous acid and chloric acid. Okay, so if it's chlorus, if it was an us, it must have originally been an ite. So chlorus was initially using the chlorite ion. So if we take a look over here, chlorite is right here. So ClO2 negative. So ClO2, now ClO2 negative and H positive, they come together perfectly one to one. So HClO2. And the next one, if it was a chloric, of course, chlor 
ick must have been an original ion of eight. Chlor eight. So keep flipping around here. Cool. So chlor eight was ClO3. So ClO3 combined with that H. So there you have it. So that's how you how you utilize the other side of that flow chart, naming compounds of a covalent nature and also acids. So if you look at the assignment there, you should be able to fill in the gaps. Uh, you like you were assigned some ionic ones, so now you can do covalent compounds and acid ones. So go, go ahead and do that, and then you can check your answer. We'll see you again.